Hello. A little while ago I did some work on some JVC DVD recorders and today I find myself in a pickle with two of them because we had a major power outage last night and uh, my uninterruptible power supplies weren't able to cope with a three hour power cut. Two of these DRMH200 machines have failed to restart when the power has been put back on. Let's have a look at them. Right, here's the first one. It's saying loading, but it's also flashing these lights erratically and making a strange buzzing noise. I'm going to power that down promptly before it does itself some damage. So uh, it clearly has power supply problems. Let's uh, have a look at it. I last replaced the power supply, repaired the power supply in 2012, and it's been powered up ever since. So we can forgive it for breaking down again. This is a, a DRMH200, which is a lot easier to work on than the later 300 model, because the power supply is its own circuit board here. Now, that particular fault we just saw with it making a funny noise and flickering lights, there's one particular capacitor that's uh, known to cause that, and it's over in this area in the primary circuit, but I believe we have faults elsewhere. Oh look, we've got bulging capacitors over here, so they are obviously need replacing there in the secondary circuit. I'm gonna put you on a, a bracket so you can see this a little bit better. All right, what we're hoping here is it's just power supply problems because there can be problems with the uh, DVD writer as well and hard disk failure. So uh, let's hope we're just looking at the power supply today but looking at those capacitors, it looks likely. Let's uh, get the power supply out. Now the first thing to do with a power supply, especially a defective one, is to look for high voltage in the primary smoothing capacitor. And here we have 290 volts. Now Big Clive may be braver than me and like to test uh, and discharge this with his fingers. I use a resistor. Am I just a wimp? You remember from a previous video that I have a remote control operation on this capacitance uh, ESR meter. So I just hold that there and press the remote control button with my foot. seven microfarad and over 20 ohms ESR. So that component has failed, that's part of the problem. Okay, these are part of the same batch, I think. But it lasted eight years, so uh, it's reasonable to replace it with the same again. Okay, I've replaced all the uh, bad capacitors that I can find, of which were plenty. Let's refit the power supply. Switch it on. The horrible noises have stopped. Loading on the display is normal. And then it's into standby mode. So that's booted properly. If I press eject, it says hello. Good, that's one machine fixed. That's uh, the capacitors that came out of the uh, first machine. Here's the second one which also failed last night. Now this one, I had done some work on the power supply a couple of years ago. Let's see what happens. 
So it sounds a lot more promising than the other one did at first. It's saying loading. It's not making horrible noises. But I believe what it does is just sit there saying loading. So I'm expecting it to be either something serious with the hard disk or the power control for the hard disk or it could be the secondary of the power supply. I'll just leave that uh, for a few moments to see if it ever stops the loading error. I'm not getting the normal sort of disk access sounds that I'd expect. I'm just going to uh, switch it on now and listen to it and feel if I can feel the hard disk spinning up. Yes, the hard disk is spinning up. You can hear it, but then it doesn't do any more. Okay. Let's take a look at the power supply. I can see something, I think, straight away. That's bulging, so we'll uh, certainly have a look at that one. Okay, there's another power supply out. And the first thing I'll do is check the uh, first capacitor in the chain, the uh, post rectifier smoothing capacitor, because that can have lots of voltage on it. A relatively modest 24 volts, that's okay. I can discharge that with the resistor just the same. Let's have a look at this uh, bulging capacitor before I start. That's supposed to be a 1000 microfarad 10 volt. Reading only slightly low, but there might be more capacitors on the circuit which are compensating for its poor performance. So I'm going to take it out. So its uh, value is not that far down, but uh, it's certainly worth replacing. Yes, 22 microfarad capacitor is looking a bit low at around about 17 and quite high ESR, so we'll change that one. And that's one of the ones we had to change on the other power supply too. Well, I've replaced a few poor quality capacitors on this board, but I'm not seeing a smoking gun like I did the other one. The other one had some really bad capacitors and this doesn't. So I don't think we have a power supply failure here. I think we possibly have a hard disk failure, which is worse. Let's put it back and uh, confirm that the fault is still there. I should point out that this, machi this uh, machine has been apart so many times that various uh, cable management is not as it should be and I think there should be a plastic cover here that's uh, disappeared over the years as well. Okay, we'll uh, power it up. Makes the right noises initially. And I think that's all it does. I think it stops there. Oh, it's making more reassuring noises than it was. I think it's booted. So the display's gone blank. You can't quite see it. It's so dark you wouldn't see it anyway. It says hello when you switch it on. I may not be able to see that. Hello, it says. Oh, well, that's a bonus. Goodbye, it says. That's good. I'm very, very pleased with that. So that's it. 
Both machines have been brought back into service and they've both been tested thoroughly and they're still working fine. They were just down to lots of capacitor failures. Please remember to like, share and especially subscribe and I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.